I guess it was said of Aang, uh, maybe in the Amari Duval <clears throat> uh, reference, that uh, he wouldn't accept students unless they <clears throat> were good at at uh, at angles, gesture, and proportions. <clears throat> I actually don't remember the exact words he used. But we're going to talk about certain ways of thinking about a couple of these things today, uh, thanks to me finding a... Uh, a little, another little volume that might be worth your time to look at. Significant parts of it are saying exactly what I'm saying, and other parts are di more difficult to follow, but but still pretty much stay along the same lines. Uh, I'm also interested in this, um, in mentioning this book, because uh, he makes a couple points that are like the points um, Nick is making in the question. <clears throat> where's, my, <clears throat> where's my voice today? <clears throat> so before we start, Doug, A... Thank you very much, and uh, Stephen Jay, for your recurring uh, 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 donations. Much appreciated, as you know. Uh, and again, I, at the beginning, I think I better go ahead and just remind you that we have um, uh, that we have uh, a live stream coming up. I'm going to have noun problems today, noun syndrome, <laughs> and uh, so. We, but the live stream is on the fifth. Uh, and so it's just next week, I guess. Uh, and for the continuing uh, demonstration and conversation surrounding that demonstration, your chance to <clears throat> ask questions about what I'm doing, get a better insight, <clears throat> and uh, for what it's worth to you. And again, I would recommend you look at uh, the uh, GBA time lapse video. It's, that's all you have to type in GBA time lapse on YouTube, and you'll see a three or four minute sort of uh, demonstration. <laughs> Of, uh, <clears throat> of the violinist, which will give you something to base some, some of your conversation on, apart from obviously having seen a bunch of other, th bunches of other things I've done online. <clears throat> now if I can just get my energy back here today. <laughs> just had lunch, I shouldn't have eaten around lunch. Beautiful summer day here in New England, and uh, uh, I, the hot lights and all notwithstanding, it's uh, really one of those beautiful temperate mid, uh, what is it, mid-spring? I guess it's late spring now, um, days. So um, let's go to the question. And the question from Nick, he said I would add to the start. So he was watching the video uh, that includes this. This is video number, I, I think it's 109. Actually, it might be 103, 106. I don't know. Uh, my first impression was 109. And then somebody has mentioned something else, but I didn't have time to look it up. But video number, if you want to watch that, you've all seen that uh, charcoal demonstration, the way I work. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, so Nick said to that, to what I've said in that, I would add to the start, placing points of the widths, just as they're done for the vertical extremities. Now, uh, I don't know how many people follow the subtlety of this, but when you're trying to establish points, anchors in a painting, widths aren't one of them. Top and bottom is one, or left and right is one. Either one you can pick. But then you pick, an, you pick a point, one point the other way, that becomes unchangeable. If you pick po unchangeable points this way and unchangeable points this way, you're going to wind up with a box that you haven't, haven't any proof that is, that's, that's, that's solid. Before you know it, you'll be changing both sides of that thing and getting lost in terms of your composition. So I recommend um, selecting a, 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 on a tall picture, <clears throat> selecting one place that you're not going to deviate from, left and right, and use that as your anchor, not two points, okay? Just to make that clear. Um, so a lot of people will say, get two points. When we were young, we always got two points, but you learn fairly quickly for some of the reasons he's talking about later, trying to correct my way of working here, um, and placing, okay, so that's, that's that first point. Uh, by the way, I want to say that what this really is, uh, is a chance to establish the difference between what we do and what they do. Nick made a point of saying he studied at least five different places in the country, and some, one of which was uh, uh, Richard Lack's uh, atelier. And, uh, and that's all really nice and good, but the fact is one of the, th one of the beautiful things about the way we work is we don't work like any of those people, and I think we're more effective uh, because of the way we work. But more effective for what, right? And so you, you remember your methods, your methodologies are all based on what qualities you're trying to get in the work. And um, so there's so many mixes of things from site size to, to all kinds of other construction drawing things in those different schools you may have gone to uh, that uh, 
who knows what all you may have boiled it down to for yourself. But I'm trying to establish with this set of videos what we do. Okay, I want to make clear what we do. So uh, the bottom statement that we say block in the envelope of the whole general shape, then axis points as one finds in structural lines and bark drawings. It sounds like you're giving a prescription to my to my viewers, and I'm going to recommend to my viewers that they go ahead and do that all day long if they want to. But you'll never understand what I'm doing if you do that, because that's what we all come out of. We've come away from doing that, all these superficial structural lines. So that's just my sort of, as you want to call it, my apology for doing this. But I'm on here to talk about our way of working, our very unique way of working. Uh, which I believe fits far better into the Boston School way of thinking than the other methods that you might be hearing about, including this, this stuff here. But, but so, but I'm not disagreeing with him the, with the idea of establishing points. That's good and placing points in directional axis lines. Now, that's the point that I wanted to make. Let's talk about this book for a second. This is called the practice, the science of drawing and art, by a guy I believe because there's an accent on the Amy Osborne, Amy Osborne Moore. It could be it could be a woman, but it doesn't sound like one. That's me. But I, the name pronunciation, I looked it up, and it says if there's an axe song uh, above one of those E's, it's a uh, male name. Who knows? That's looking it up on, on Google can get you almost anything. <laughs> so, but there's the book, just for your information. And I'm going to also throw out there that if you want a copy of this book, I'll be happy to forward it to you. Just email me and ask me for it, okay? Uh, don't ask me under the under the comments. Uh, write, send them my email, uh, ingbretson underscore studios at yahoo.com, and I'll send you this book. In this book, getting back to Nick, uh, he does talk about throwing some angles, some directional angles. And I'm going to talk today about what he calls ovoids, this guy, uh, Osborne, uh, I mean, uh, more. He talks about ovoids and directionals, or envelopes, as uh, Nick refers to it here, the envelope of the whole general shape. Um, now, uh, all the points, all these points, um, are. I'm going to cover all these points, but let me just talk about one of the points before we go further than that. Uh, the, uh, and then so he talks about placing points and directional axis lines, the main being the direction of the horse head. Now, actually, if you have a horse head going this way and you have a horse's ba ba base going this way, then the axis is this one, if you're big. Now you can say a main axis meaning the most dramatic axis, but the fact is this is the big axis, the horse head to the horses, as you can see in this uh, image. You can see the drama is from the figure on the right all the way up to the top of the horse's head. It's a bit more like an A than it is like a dramatic axis, but in fact, so the way you talk about this is a counter axis, right? If this is the great line, this is a counter axis, is or, or a counter line, right? So all these lines going this way are countering this long drama here. That's a whole different way of discussion that you probably haven't heard of. So um, unless you're watching my videos consistently. Um, now, he said, one could go on drawing outlines and details only to find the axis having never been secured. Now, the point of this way of working, and again, I'll go back to my way of drawing, is what I'm trying to establish with the actual shapes is the, is the proportions and the gesture, just like everybody else, except I just draw real things. I don't draw under, under marks. I don't do a bunch of construction marks. Uh, I don't. I don't draw generalized uh, shapes. I draw specific shapes. So everything that's not visible. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I never work with anything that's not visible. I draw the shape I see, but the fact is, what I'm after is the shape I can't see, the gesture and the proportions. Those are only made visible by the players, the visual players, like the piece of the ear going to that bend in the tip of the nose. That might be, that, that is an angle, right? That's a dramatic angle. But I can shoot a, a gestural angle, like, like shall we say this, all day long. I can shoot that gestural angle, a line like that, but it doesn't mean anything until all these guys align to, to conspire to make that general thrust, right? So which of these angles is it? Which of these myriad of things is it that gives you that general thrust, right? So the point of that is, what is the point? It's too general an idea. We throw, throw an angle here all day long, throw, throw a straight line here all day long. Uh, it certainly is okay to get your thoughts going, but I am in, I'm in the world where I'm not particularly trying to mess up my service, especially if you're working on a charcoal drawing on a beautiful white paper and you want to keep the lights. The last thing I want is a whole bunch of chunk marks uh, in the middle of the paper. So, you know, preparatory marks. Now I'm going to defend this the rest of the way in a second. One could go on drawing outlines and details only to find the axis having never been secured. 
Now, so what happens is the presumption of that way of working is that if you first do big crude things, and even says then block in the envelope of the whole general shape, then axis points as one finds in structural lines in bark drawing. Well, if you're talking about axis in the sense of crosshairs, and I'll show you images of that in a second, that's a whole different discussion from anything we talk about. And uh, so, so, but when I'm talking about axis, I am talking about the dramatic angle, and I stick with that. Uh, but if you block in the envelope and it doesn't have any character, it's still, again, it's a generalization. So it doesn't deliver you very much. It's when you start bringing that, what you're calling details, that you can actually say what you know for sure. So I actually draw the look of nature, including a silhouetting earpiece, for example, and a, and a masked bit of the nose, and let that speak for me and, and deliver me the look of the angle, right? And so I'm not doing any preliminary measuring or any of those kinds of things to do it. I'm just saying this, Nick, to follow up, that there's a whole different way of working, and you're in a different one. So, and most people have worked in the way you're talking about because they're available with, and as I mentioned, I'll show you a little bit later, they're available in the, uh, in the uh, well, at least the Barg images, and they're in the speed book, uh, the practice and science of drawing. <clears throat> but, uh, and so many of these things all have to do with ang some Angian concepts too that are there in contradiction with that, but that's, we'll not talk about that. But in the bar, what I would like love to see sometime is somebody to produce and send to me, if you have a copy of it, any writing done by Barg or, or, or Jerome that describes the method that, they're, that, that, that people have extracted from these sets of drawings. I know they're plates. And copying plates, copying, copying has always been a, a routine of the old schools, right? But uh, there's two things about that. One is you're copying... Um, uh, a plate without instructions. It doesn't say anything. And it's presumed that you're going to do construction drawing. I believe the whole world of construction drawing is based on those, on those, that, that work and that teaching or that, that, those images, those plates. Uh, but the other one is that you people who are working in the Barg stuff, you're never, you're not learning to draw 3D. You're, you're, you're not solving many of the most important problems. Maybe the most significant one is the capacity to see what uh, this guy Osborne calls prospectively. You don't see, uh, you, won't, you don't learn to see, um, and I think that's actually a term that you would find in Da Vinci's way of thinking too, although he doesn't separate it. But you don't see, you don't, you don't, you don't learn to see um, uh, flat, the things as if they were already flat, because you don't have to reduce it to flat because the drawing is already flat, which is why you shouldn't spend any serious amount of time blocking in those axes, those bar drawings. I wouldn't do it. Um, you could try one for a minute, or if you wanted to see how somebody handles charcoal with a on the surface and copy that look, which is a nice, useful way to do, you know, to get benefit out of one of those, then that would be a different thing. But then use it occasionally and make sure when you do it, you have a, a plate that's in full focus and it's a full size plate. Otherwise, you aren't getting the benefit of a one to one sense of how the charcoal is used, whether it's sharp or whatever, anything, even what value the charcoal might be. So uh, there's so many problems with the, um, but the Barg thing just overall is, you know, that's a whole other world. Let me get back on point. We're talking today about um, uh, uh, ovoids, because that's Osborne's word, and, and axes, or axis, but axes, which is a word that Nick brings into it. And, I, and that's all we're going to do the rest of the time. I'm just going to look at pictures and we're going to talk about these ideas, these two simple ideas. So let's go to the images. This... Um, I guess this is actually the final, this is a dusty old version. <laughs> the, the drawing hasn't been protected very well. It's been sitting around the studio. Um, so it's a dusty, a dusty version of it. Uh, I'm going to come back to this one. I think I'll end with this one and talk about the process. Because one of the things about the, um, the, everything we do, and this is a defense uh, of, of what we do. So I'm going to talk about envelopes and axes. I'm going to come back to this one as the final point to show uh, you, Nick, and others. Uh, w why we do what we do. But let's just talk about the ovoids and axes. So here's the first, this is the way uh, Osborne would describe it. And I rather liked it. I'd never seen it before. This book is something I bought. And by the way, part of the fun of what I just did is that here's the book. As I found this book in my library, I found I'd reviewed it, but only in a cursory way. So I decided I'd have to give it a little more time than that. And uh, what did I do with the, uh, the receipts in here somewhere? <laughs> now maybe I didn't bring it in. But I've received from when I bought it at the Arlington Bookstore in, um, in uh, Massachusetts uh, way back in 96. 
uh, but um, but having read it, I found that I he's talking about the science of appearances in just the way Mel, Mel, uh, uh, Meldrum, Max Meldrum talks about it. But one of the things he's contributing is this idea of ovoids. Everything, every body of work, every body of objects has a tendency to produce an envelope, right? That's what Nick is talking about, and rightly. But do we have to go through here and hack this out in diagonal marks and junk like that and set that up primar- in beforehand? Uh, or do we really have to just simply recognize what the, this one unit is doing and make sure ours is doing that in, in, the, in the progress? A lot of what happens, I think, with students today is just a kind of a sheer lack of, uh, of um, you know, having let your processes change by having get to the finish more frequently, having gotten to the finish more frequently, and looking for particular things. I said we are looking for definitely particular, differently, different particular things than you are in the finish in our work. The impressionist mind is not the same one as the realist. I'm not assure you of that. Uh, but the science of appearances should be the same for everybody. Uh, uh, leave it at that for now. Now, I'm just looking at this uh, with, and there are the words, proportions in diagonals. So Ang, Ang would say, if a guy come, can't get, come in there and get this width right to this length, you're not in the game. This isn't got, nothing good is going on here. But then there's the tilt. This overall thing has a tilt. So if we did, even if we would, I didn't mean to not include this. I just made a generalized loop to show you a, a, a sausage, an ovoid with a tilt. And I thought it was a useful concept. So there's another one. So if it gets smaller, there's, a, there's another one. There's an ovoid. It could be, you could think of it as a bent ovoid. So it could have been more like a potato a little bit, you know, you could have done it like that. But your idea is, again, the same thing. What's the general tilt of this ovoid? And what's so this envelope again? So you don't have to draw this. You shouldn't draw this circle. I don't think you should draw the envelope. I think you just have to have it in your mind of what you're pursuing and never take, never take your eyes off of it, okay? So one of the reasons we're all over the place at once, as you saw me referring to just a second ago, is because we're trying to set up the major, uh, we're, tr- we're literally trying to set up this major thing just the way you are, except not the way you are. We're doing just what you're doing, what we're doing with a whole different process. We're doing it by the points that we actually see. So we set up a point like this and a point like this, and we're looking for other points that are going to produce this for us in the beginning. And we're always, we always have our eyes on all these. So once you find that, this whole mass going, any subdivisions is going to create its own units. There's going to be another one right there, shall we say. And there are multiplicity. There's just no ends to the possible kinds of little shape abstractions, each of which has a directional and a proportion. And these are just such nice gifts because they keep you out of realism. They keep you... And you don't want to, you want to do this boxing thing and then all of a sudden think you're in somehow in a, in, a real, in a realist world. You want to continually, through the entire painting, be pursuing proportions and angle. Okay? Just all the way through. Okay? At, from the greater to the lesser. The one thing I like about what you're saying, Nick, is that you're talking about the idea of um, the major, the majors. Did I say, so the, here they are, oops, that's his fester. That's really good, Paul. It's supposed to say gesture and proportion. <laughs> uh, I type too fast sometimes. All right. So, and then there's sometimes, this is the sergeant conversations, points and angles, which is what we base things on. So, so much of this, here's a, here's a defined place, and there's a definite angle to this point, and to other points. And, uh, and it's sometimes more general, sometimes extremely specific. But, but they're always based on very specific notations, a look of nature at a spot. It wouldn't matter where it was. If you need it, you'd have to articulate it the way we work. But here again, this is just a smaller uh, ovoid, and it has a particular tilt, the gestural line, going this way, and has particular proportions. That's just true everywhere, okay? And that's all you need to be aware of. Whether you, you, there's no reason to go around here and doing underpainting if you can understand that you're always aware of those things and always working all those things all the time. Now, to some people, that may seem, well, I want to get all that stuff out of the way so I can then just work on the, something else, whatever, you know, the, getting the inside you know, modeling or some such thing. But there's no such escape. Everything, everything out there in the visual world has, every mass has gesture and proportions. This dark right here, this mass going from here, shall we just say up through here, I say into here, any amount, any spot where you said to stop has its own g- gesture, ovoid, its own, its own envelope with its own gesture and proportions. Okay, that's true of darks, it's true of lights, it's true of, of combinations of things. And that's the bigger idea that I believe dominates everything. Uh, now the bar plate, uh, 
I have no idea if this is what he meant by axes. These things show up in those things. Uh, but if, you, if you're aware of vertical, which you always should be, then these angles, every single angle, is, and vertical is the only given, is the god of all angles. The horizontal will conflict with it. And get, it'll confuse you, but you can always hang a plum. And, and uh, Sargent didn't say, he didn't say keep the, the ruler or, or, the, or the horizontal level in your left hand. He said keep the plum in your left hand. The plum is, every angle relates to plum, so that's a good thing. But you can see there's a more, more or less generalized on an angular basis. And again, that's exactly what Ang wouldn't do, uh, just mentioning it. And again, you're not working even from a three-dimensional thing. So you can look at this thing without even thinking and then start working from life. You'll have the idea. You don't need to copy these things. And finally, then, Harold Speed does the same thing. It's the angular construction model that we've talked about in a different video, and you'll be able to find that. There are several videos out there beyond uh, this one that talk about some of the same things. But as you said, what, what I'm liking to do more and more is focus on a single point when, I, when, it, when it comes up, like Nick brought this one up. Um, uh, and uh, so, again, you can see there's this, this, this kind of an angle, which is, this is very, very specific construction. And again, I do wonder why you wouldn't articulate this the way it looks and then articulate this the way it looks. You've just about done it. Why don't you just go and do it? It doesn't take any more time, <laughs> providing you don't have to feel like you have to fill in everything in between. If your mentality is to start at the top and then draw your way down one side and back up the other or whatever, you will wind up with a different way of working. And which gets me back, and I'll leave you, I'll, I'll give you one, I think there's one more thing to show you here. Yeah. Uh, let me come back to these. But so that gets us back to this, my point that I wanted to make to you is this process that we use. This process, instead of being a linear process where you block in stuff and then you start subdividing it or you start then using that basis of the block in to find real lines, instead of being linear like that, we draw, we're all, first of all, we're all over the place at once and we have all the horses going at once. And I've talked about those two points for you. And by, by the mercy of God, if I can someday get out the book, the, uh, the Boston School book I'm writing, all these points are going to be clarified. Uh, and I've talked about them before, of course, and, and continue to in these videos. But the all over the place at once model and all the horses at once model, and look, I'm writing horses. Ay, ay, ay. My eyes are going, guys. Uh, <laughs> but all the horses, all the horses, horses mean uh, a value contrast. It means shape. Some, what, by the way, this guy Osborne calls form. It's the classic use of the word. When they mean shape, they say form. But when they, say, when they mean modeling, they either say modeling or they also say form. So it gets confusing. Gamma was tended to be the same way. But, um, but, so, but, but angles, proportions, uh, 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 points, you know, for the purposes of getting at point and angles, these things are all... Establish. So we, we establish, we draw something real. We may choose this right here, just this tippy point. And if you go to my video, by the way, you can see what I drew first. And I probably went down here to find top and bottom, right? And then I went out to a single left place. I don't, or whatever I did, I'm trying, typically I'm, I'm encouraging you to find one place and don't be worrying about the second place because we're not interested in that. We, in the long run, we're interested in getting the oval here, getting the big width of this mass shape. But right now we're looking at anything that will deliver. Probably the next thing that will begin to deliver will be something out here, getting you down to this. And then it'll be about this width and this length, and that's its own envelope, right? So I typically could tell to refer to these as boxes, but then when I say that, students often think that they don't look like boxes because they're not square corners. <laughs> so geometry is a triangle. As soon as you have three points, you have a you have a two-dimensional phenomenon that has mass. So it has the illusion of mass, so it has width to length. And so it has its own envelope and all those things. So as soon as you have any three points, we already have that. So once you get this and this to this, if you get the distance right between these two, you already have a triangle and it should have a width. And you should be able to, you'll learn to, if you just work on this way of working, you'll just learn to find those things rather quickly. And sometimes you have to learn to, to, to not hang on preciously to one because they're all in the same camp as these, as these diagonals and, and and construction marks that you're putting in, they're all in the same camps. They're preliminary. They don't mean a whole lot. They're intended to be as like as you can. So they're more than just preliminary. I want to say that, by the way, one of the things that I do this for is because I, for the same reason, I know many, many people have talked about noticing after they've worked on a cast for three weeks to finally in the third week see their proportions. And that's what one of the things you just mentioned, Nick. You can't actually get your proportions um, 
there, there's something about the finish that contains some of the proportions. So it's not as easy as simply saying you're doing a hack line, a hack line, and there's your proportions. There's no such thing. Uh, you need the articulate shape, and you need to revisit all the proportions with the actual shape. So if you want crude lines under there, it's up to you. I don't necessarily mean that everybody thinks should think the way I do, but one of the things I'm trying to do is never draw anything that isn't on the paper in front of me. And I don't do that as a trap for myself. I do that because why should I bother drawing junk I don't need? If I can get an angle by having a, an articulate bit of nose or whatever, if I can get this angle right and this angle right and this triangle right, why do I care about that kind of stuff? But you have to be willing. See, what you're doing is at the beginning, you're saying we're going to do these envelopes with, with diagonals and junk. If you're thinking the Barg way, that's sort of the generalized way or the, um, or the speed way. But, uh, but I'm saying we can, all those things are implied very nicely. And I am wholly and definitely doing, as it were, the same thing. I'm just leaving them invisible. But you absolutely must be working from the outside in. That's our process, is from the outside in. So we're out here to be down here, to be over here, to be whatever it takes, to be again out here. I like to refer to the star. If you follow my area, you remember when you were a kid, you, you started at a point down here and you went to a point up here, and then you went down again. And before you know it, you're out here and there's five points, right? You have a star. That's this way of working. It's a five-pointed star or whatever. You know, you go from here to here, from somewhere down here to somewhere else over here. And this is what we keep doing. We keep going around like this. Now that is establishing the same thing, except that what happens is by the time you get the third or fourth one of these in, you start beginning to see the image. You, get, you start seeing these powerful suggestions of the truth rising. And that's true if you, particularly if you draw in the visual order. In other words, draw the contrasts correctly from the beginning. So that you relate the contrast, whatever contrast this is, is well related to whatever the contrast this is. It's contrast plus edge. So these, this thing will have a sense of the visual forward backwards in a painting as well. So if these things three or four or five marks later are well suggested, you're going you're gonna to have this strongly implied sense of the third dimension, which is another one of the gifts that keeps on giving uh, of this way of working. So all over the place at once, all the different horses at once, and light affected again, as I said, is one of the horses. Form is one of the horses. Now again, so we're, you see there's a sense of form in certain places, but we're not noodling form. We're generalizing, broadly expressing form. You can see wherever it happens, this has got a caved-in look right here, or this has got a rolling look up here. This is all form that's fully incorporated. And I, don't, I think I must talk about this stuff in the video, about working on things like that to bring, keep bringing the thing up in general ways based on uh, uh, making attempts as like as you can at the beginning, you know, really aiming small, miss small, and then improving those things with all the new data you bring post the first four things. So as I said, it's not a linear process. The linear process, first we're going to block it in, and then we're going to do something else, maybe subdivide it, and then we're going to do something else. That's not even close to what we do. Now, in the extreme other end of that, by the way, I had a, a visitor, she's a friend, but she was working on... Uh, on a uh, portrait with one of my students, and she was doing something like this across the board. And I think this comes from Myron Barnstone. And there's so many, you know, this is so problematical. Um, uh, but there's so many th different sort of th devious things you can do instead of drawing exactly what you see. Uh, and But your motives are interesting. So this guy's whole entire basis is, is something about what he, his way of thinking. and working with this, this, the golden mean. Um, uh, one of the other things I should mention again is that this uh, presumption of what of Nick's comment, what, he, what, is, what seems to be presumed is that, uh, that we're, when you draw, you're drawing things. And our way of working isn't things. Our way of working is impressionistic. We're not drawing things, we're drawing effects. And we're placing them well in relation to each other. And by the time you get these, these interesting masses and these interesting points and these angles and the effect relationships, right, all of a sudden you're going to be, you're going to be living in a profoundly accurate world from the point of view of things. But the way you speak uh, and the way most people think is we're drawing, the drawing is drawing the horse. But drawing the ensemble is what drawing is, right? So we're not drawing a horse and putting a man in front of him. We're actually drawing an ensemble. So that's just one other point I need to make. Let's just end this with a discussion about uh, other people's way of working. Now, if anybody has some of that angularity in them, it's probably, uh, it's probably Bouguereau, right? And you can see a little bit in the fingers out here. 
And, but I want you to note again that the fingers aren't first blocked in on some big mass, right? He actually went out there and put fingers on, so to speak, even if he did them with somewhat straight lines, which is certainly an efficiency and a reasonable model up to a point. You'll find that others like Degas will tend to draw, they'll tend to draw more articulately from the beginning. But, but still, that's, that's, that's one of, and you can see other use of angularities uh, in different parts of this, you know, shooting straightish lines. So it's pretty, you know, it has a certain sort of clunkiness to it compared to this, which I, if you ask me, is hugely graceful. My guess is that this is far more based on the round, and this one has some element of the angular um, in it. But I'm showing you this image to just simply show you this guy drawing an actual line, floating it in space. He's actually, and, I, and if you look at other parts of the um, painting, um, this kind of thing here may be the nearest thing you can get to that construction you're talking about. Um, I could show you drawings by Ang and, and Degas and others where you'll actually see an entire arm moved, but the, entire, but the line has always been drawn as such, right? When Ang says, draw lines, my son, to, to Degas, draw lines from memory and from nature. He doesn't mean that you should be memorizing construction lines. And it doesn't mean you should be doing construction. He means you should be memorizing a line. And you should be learning a line. The way, the way when you're like a sergeant, you could be closing your eyes at night and be still drawing in the air. You can actually remember the line as you traced it in the air. Which is, by the way, is not a bad thing for you to do. Um, uh, when you're looking, one of those things, you know, that just just find you slow your brain down enough to see all the inter intricacies of a line, much as if you were doing uh, what they call blind contour drawing. We've talked about all that before. Uh, is there any other point I need to make here? But what I'm going to suggest to you is that this isn't a kind of drawing. I don't, I really don't see virtually any drawing in Western art that's, say, pre Degas that has construction kind of stuff in it. And I've said that to you before. I'd be happy to have you show me something, uh, anyone who has that, but the typical work of all these guys, you just see the line. And you see the line moved over. The line meaning the look of nature of the line. And I encourage you to really try this and see that it works. But, um, so, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, for now. Let's just review the uh, comment and see if there's anything else I should say. Um, I would add to the start placing points of the widths, uh, just as done so that you keep place, placing it. points and directional axes lines. Now, you, So you know that what you're doing when you make your first two points, you're already getting a directional line with that. That's your job. And then by the time you make your third point, say so you have to make top and bottom, your first job is to get the top and bottom points that you're using at the right axis, right? And then any other angles. So instead of using some dramatic word like axis, you could just use the word angle, uh, the tilt. The, um, the diagonal, I, I like the way, by the way, that Osborne uses a word the way I use it sometimes, frequently, and that is I learned early on as a student that the line, Gamble said, don't neglect your diagonals. And as I began to wonder and wonder about it, I realized that the life in a painting is in the diagonals. And, and, and Osborne calls it the life line. Uh, I believe he calls it the li life or the live line. And that's really true. So getting angles to be right, angles are just angles. And they can be all over the place. There's no, there's no golden angle, there's just the angle. And there's the relationship of the angles, which is one of the, which you want to get really good at. But it's point angles, and then actual angles when when, when if either when straight lines make or or more or less straight units make what would, can be perceived to be a linear unit. But if there's just two points sticking out, there's an angle between the two, just as I showed in the horse's head. Um, so he says, once you go on drawing outlines and details only to find the axis, that's all, all students have done that. We've all, we've all found that we found that we couldn't, we didn't have the gesture. Uh, when you get the whole combination, by the way, of the, of, of the, all the stuff on a painting, you have what's called the gesture. That's the, that's the great, that's the great diagonal, right? It's, the, it's just the gesture or the movement, if you want to call it that way, but that part that, how the whole thing adheres, right? Some people would say the sense of the thing, you know, um, uh, the sense of the thing, the uh, but it means the gestural sense. But yeah, we all went through that as students. But um, but there's nothing in our way of working that that causes that to happen. Because I'm drawing accurately on the first mark I make does not mean I'm going to get the angles wrong. <laughs> that is to say that I'm not on top of it. Put it that way. Okay. So I'm going to tell you this is a very different way of working. The most primary thing I'm trying to say, and even re reason I'm on here is to show you a very different way of working having been trained in all the other ways that you're talking about, and because it delivers more. And that's where I'll leave it for you. 
All right, guys, try it out. I, I, I actually encourage anybody to try this with courage and push past where you've already been and see what it does. I found that myself frequently when I was a student with Gamble, having to try something. I'd seen something. I said, this is better. But that means everything's got to be done backwards from what I'd been doing with Gamble. And I switched everything and I started working backwards. As Degas would say, um, if you've been drawing from the top down, how about start drawing from the bottom and go up? You know, now, I'm not a guy into, I'm an all over the place at once guy, but so I'm not doing that either. But, but what you're talking about is this capacity that you need to get into your brain about being flexible, trying some other way. And, and wait and working it through until you understand it. Because no matter what it does, it will be of use to you someplace in your work. Whether or not you take it as your whole method or not, there's going to be something about it that informs you. Which is exactly what I found in, um, in, in, in making note that the line on, on Fetchin's drawings was frequently uh, over the, the modeling. Right? So you, putting, what, what was that? Putting the line down? Putting the modeling down, putting the line after that. I mean, everybody. No, we do we do contours and we fill it in, right? And that shook my boat. Right? And I said, this, "This is interesting. Let me try this." And there I was in the next in the next iteration of the model. I was there working that out, wondering about that. And it's always broken through to me that we need to try the reverse of whatever it is. We need to see the opposite. Uh, I'm talking about talking about morals. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about painting painting uh, methodologies and strategies. Okay. So thank you, Nick, for your note, and uh, I hope I haven't been harsh in any way. Uh, but, uh, but thank you again, and uh, thank you all for your patience with us, and uh, keep those donations coming in. Don't forget to stay tuned to the, uh, for the live next week, the live stream. And then three weeks from that, the, uh, two weeks from that, I guess, the, uh, uh, my intensive, where I actually t try to get sort of people who have some confidence in their drawing, to get them informed about it, this other way of working, which uh, Nick has led me to, to want to share with you even more. Okay. All right. All right. Looking forward to seeing you next time. I hope you have a great summer. Uh, a great week till this, <laughs> till the thing first. And a great summer. All right, guys. Take care.